Hello, Soul Family. I love you all. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day today. Today, I'm going to be begin a part of a series called uh, Kabbalah, basically. The Tree of Life. Understanding the Tree of Life. Um, I know that I've, on this channel, gave many different Kabbalistic um, references to things. And I want to make sure that each and every one of you understand it. So I'm going to go over a basic general understanding of the different aspects of Kabbalah. Um, and we are going to be viewing this from a hermetic Kabbalah from the uh, Western esoteric tradition. So this is not going to be uh, like the Jewish Kabbalah, but there's a Lenarian Lem or something. Uh, we won't be discussing uh, that aspect. Although it definitely, the, the Kabbalah came from the Metu Netter, which is Egyptian. So the Jews actually had um, dr grafted the aspects of Kabbalah within the Egyptian pantheon and basically made it for their own religion. But I'm going to explain to you in this video the Sephiroth. And before I get into it, I'm going to make a separate video talking about the Ain, the Ain Sof, and the Ain Sof Ur. Which is the light, the light without, and light without in. Um, so, before the universe or any type of creation comes into existence, there were these three layers of source or the universe. The Ein, Ein Sof, Ein Sof Or. And basically what it is, is the that God or the divine, the all that we exist within, the mind of the all that we exist within, is... Um, basically existing within a void and many religions even speak of this whether it be the, the vedic texts or biblical texts jewish texts um, god existed within the darkness of the void and you have to understand that darkness actually is a form of light um, so the being came into self Gnosis, it came, became self-aware that it existed and that it was the all. And it wanted a way, basically, to differentiate itself from itself. So it couldn't tell the, like, the difference of itself. It couldn't be able to reflect upon itself and understand itself fully. So what happened was the all began folding itself into itself. And what happened was this created a shadow and the shadow of the divine that was created when it began folding itself in upon itself was light. So this is where light begins coming into creation. And then it moves into these Sifaruf. So <clears throat> we're going to begin up here with Kether, which uh, stands for crown. And within this is the first primordially, primordial swirlings. This is the first swirlings of creation at all and um this is where the the energy of the creator is still in perfect balance and harmony so this is where masculine and feminine are both still united when we move from kether out into hokma this is the reason you get that god is a man this is where they get the masculine energy of God. And also, what, this is why they say Adam came before Eve. It all has to do with Kabbalah. And the reason is, the energy source is creating when it moves from here to Hokmah is uh, masculine in aspects because it is an electrical energy. It's force. This is where force and inspiration... Um, the associative mind, like um, God's like basically, or the divine is basically brainstorming what this creation will be, and it sends out this, this energy, this force, and that is hokma, which is wisdom. So, this is also connected with like the great father, any, any god that's like a all father all god that's masculine is going to be connected to hokma hokma is um like i said is wisdom it's also connected to um the um 
Well, son of a gun, what was I about to say? Oh, all of the Zodiac. So, the entire Zodiac is held within this. All 12 of the, of the natural signs and the 13th that comes around occasionally. And the 12 and 13 of the Zodiac actually is connected to the 12 cranial nerves within your brain. And the 13th that you create after you raise your Kundalini all the way. So now we have the All-Father, the masculine, electric, creative energy. It moves on to Bina, the Great Mother, the Divine Mother. And this one is the first place. This is understanding. And Bina is connected to the planet Saturn. So we know Saturn has that control aspect, structure, um, um, refining things and that is uh, this is going to be the head of the pillar of severity the all father or the father the force energy is connected to this pillar of mercy and then we have the middle pillar going directly down the center now the direction that we're going with this going like this zigzagging is called the path of the flaming sword so that is a very masculine energy. That's another reason God is called a man. It's a very masculine energy. All energy, all sephira are negative, negatively charged and feminine to the sephira before it because the sephira before it is masculine and is projecting the energy into this one. This one is the feminine because it's receiving. And then once it sends out to the next sephira, it becomes masculine and then changes back into feminine when it receives. So, this one connected to Saturn. Basically, anything that is connected to Saturn that you understand within astrology is definitely connected to this. This is the first separation of Source from itself actually coming into form. So, we have Force and Form. And forced and form is going to be going back and forth between it, um, creating this structure of the tree of life. So, after Kether, there's an invisible uh, uh, doorway or sephira that is here called Da'ath. Um, that's like your decisive mind, and it's connected to knowing. But we're not going to go into Da'ath now. We'll do an entire video on Da'ath. Well, we're going to do an entire video on each of the sephira, but this is just a general overview. We move from Bina over here to Hokma. Hokma is connected to the planet Jupiter, which is the planet of abundance. And this uh, sephira is called Mercy. <clears throat> um, within Kabbalah, this is considered like the grateful master, a good leader of a country, like the king of a country that brings tons of abundance to his people and tons of love, not a controller that rules over like a dictator. This is the all abundant being, you know, and this brings massive abundance to it. This is um, connected to coagula. To coagulate, to come together, to bring things to you. Um, and that is definitely, when you look at the image of the Baphomet, you have Salve up here, pointing towards Gebura, which means to dissolve, and then Coagula, et coagula, which means to coagulate, to bring together, which is connecting to the Pillar of Mercy and uh, chesed. So, this is going to be, like I said, connected to anything that you've heard uh, in astrology connected to Jupiter. And also, it is just like the, the abundant God, the abundant aspect of God. So, this is like the all-loving, all-loving, all-giving, all-forgiving type God energy. <clears throat> but guess what? That exact same being... It's not two separate beings. It's not God and the devil. It's the exact same entity. We move from Chesed over here to Gebura. Now, Gebura is connected to Mars. That's that Martian energy. And uh, this one is called strength uh, or severity. Um, both are, are given to this one, but um, 
is definitely severity. This is the dissolving. This is salve. This is where you're removing things. This is the energy of chaos and destruction and removing things, stripping away what is no, no longer serves. And, um, yeah, it's connected to Mars. And this is dissolving everything away. So this is uh, probably the most intense of the pillar of severity when it comes to uh, masculine, powerful energies. But... Um, like I said, each of these have masculine and feminine uh, properties to them. So you never can just look at one of them and say, oh, it's all masculine. Because there's definitely a feminine aspect to each of these. And also, within the sephira, the, the sephira that will be directly between it pointing downward is, uh, is basically the marriage of these two sephira. These two sephira are married in dot. These two sephira are married in Tippereth, becoming the perfect balance of each, and these two sephiroth are connected to Yasod. So, like I said, Gebu Ra is connected to any of the astrological energies you hear about Mars, and basically the anything that has anything to do with removal or dissolving things remo and uh, like banishing things, binding things out of your life. Now, then we have Tippereth. Tippereth, the heart center, the sun, this is connected to the sun in the sky, and its name is beauty, but it doesn't mean the beauty of, um, like, l literal physical beauty, it just means, like, the beauty of all of creation, because this is where... Let's basically say this. There is nothing new under the sun. And that saying comes from Tippereth. Because every person, place, thing, thought, idea, spirit, god, goddess, every single thing that has ever been in existence resides within this. And this is actually the space of your higher self. So everything that ever happens that is being created in these less dense forms of reality, here is where they're all, their existence um, is manifest, but it's still not physical yet. So this is the etheric uh, blueprints of what becomes manifest within the physical. Um, there's actually a veil called, the, I believe it's the Vela Paraket that uh, is right here, that um, you must, a, a magician must pierce through in, in order to reach this Adeptus Minor grade, I believe it's Adeptus Minor, when you reach, uh, when it's in like the Golden Dawn or the OTO or something, um, the Adeptus Minor grade is when you reach right here, or it may be the Adeptus Major, not 100% sure, um, but Tippereth is... Like I said, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything that ever has or ever will exist, exists within this sephira. Um, this is also connected to, like, the Christ energy. You know, the Son of God, S-U-N, being the S-O-N. This is why most people have the saying, you can only go to the Father through Christ. It has nothing to do with Jesus or Yeshua, the actual person or being what it means is the christ energy that is within your body that kundalini christ energy that's risen from your mudlahara all the way up to your sahasrara it must go through the heart center it must go through the christ it must be sacrificed and 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 dissected basically cross-sectioned um like the the equal arm cross of the zodiac or the actual Jesus cross it's basically the the in the the center to where all things that are within the etheric plane begin to become manifest so from Tippereth we move on to Netzek which is connected to Venus and this is victory um so this sephira is connected to your right brain, and it's connected to all things creative that are like the right brain. Art, music, um, yeah, art, um, writing, any type of inspiration that is creative where you're making or creating anything. 
Also, all the Venus uh, connections, which are like connections emotionally with friends, family, your lover, um, relationships, stuff like that, are all connected to Netzach. And like I said, that's connected to the planet Venus and also to victory. Then we move over from Netzach over to Hod. And Hod is going to be your left brain, your intellect. Um, this is called Splendor, and it's connected to the planet Mercury. Um, so it's definitely connected to all mercurial energies or mercurial deities. Um, also, Hold is just connected to all things that are left brain. So learning, language, mathematics, um, what else? Philosophy, magic, all of magic resides within here um but basically this is the balance of the left and right brain um parts of consciousness uh within the um astral form i guess you would say because this is but well we'll go into the four worlds here in a little bit but hode is definitely that left brain energy and it's connected to mercury in the intellect we move on down now to Yesod. Yesod, the Sephira of the moon, the foundation of the universe. This right here is the filter or the funnel that every single one of these energies funnels into the, um, the kingdom. You know, Malkuth, the earth, the four elements. And Yasod is, um, I believe it was Aleister Crowley, um, either him or Madame Blavatsky, one of them said that, uh, or no, 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 it was, I believe it was Aleister Crowley, because uh, Dion Fortune mentions it within her book. Well, actually, it was either Crowley or Fortune that said this, but they nicknamed this the Vision of the Machinery of the Universe. So this is connected to your subjective realm. This is connected to your imagination, to your mind's eye, your, your astral form, your astral body, uh, the, the etheric blueprint of, of who you and what you are and the entire universe exists right here. Now the reason that it's uh, this path right here actually the world path with the world card, which is connected to Saturn um, and uh, the, the letter Tau from uh, Hebrew or Tav, Tau or Tav, however you want to say it, which is the last Hebrew letter. The reason that this path is the hardest to, to break through is because we have so much indoctrination and... Um, programs that we have playing through our subconscious that are illusions that keep us from reaching our true divinity and so the reason that this path the world card is so hard to go is because we have all this programming that is why it's so important to do shadow work because once you start doing the shadow work and breaking down these false belief systems and begin reprogramming your subconscious with these formulas and these algorithms that I'm showing you here on this channel, um, then you will be able to much easier tap into your soul, your imagination, and you will be able to begin rising on the tree. Now, um, get a, give a shout out to the god, Travis Magus, um, for nicknaming this one the uh, Sephira of Etheric patterns because that vision of the machinery of the universe is really your subjective universe projecting these etheric patterns into your mind's eye so the etheric pattern the sephir of etheric patterns that makes so much sense and we're going to move on from Yasod now down to Malkuth Malkuth is the kingdom that is the four elements. That is the express, the physical expression of the Tetragrammaton. The four worlds in one. And uh, we'll go over the four worlds later. But this is the earth plane. This is the physical realm. This is where 
the objective universe resides. So everything above this is more and more and more subjective. It's something that is etheric. It's something that is individual to each human being. The universe has this blueprint playing out, but also we have it playing out within each and every one of us. So when we're doing this great work, the magnum opus, we are aligning ourselves with the energy of the universe. And it makes it much more easy to manifest your dream life whenever you are aligned with the energies of the universe. But, yeah, Malkuth is connected to the Earth. Um, and it just really is the accumulation of each of these Sephiroth. Now, I want to also go in and explain that these Sephiroth, even though they look like this right here, they actually, in the... Um, in the older traditions and stuff, they weren't like this, set up like this in a tree. This is just something so that our intellect can grasp hold of it, that our analytical mind can start to understand it. So, um, actually, what these are doing is they're expanding spheres around each other. So, this one, actually, the energy fills Kether, and then when it moves out of Kether, it moves into the next Sephira. Hukma, which actually is a, sur a sphere surrounding Kether. And then when it moves from Hukma into Bina, there's another, another sphere that surrounds that. Man, I wish I had that picture in here somewhere that shows the image. I can't remember if there's any pictures in here that shows how it looks. Man, I should have pulled it up before I did this. I'll probably make another video just showing that symbol of the Kabbalah in just concentric rings basically just rings around rings around rings around rings and um also i want to go over that the sephira are objective and the pathways in between them are subjective that's definitely something that i want you to understand about the nature of these uh these sephira and the pathways going down in between them um Let's see, I think that's probably all that I'm going to go into right now. And then I'll, um, actually one more quick thing. We'll go over how this is, how this connects to the mind or whatever. So this is like inspiration. So this is like your associative mind. So this is when you're brainstorming, being creative, or right brain, all right brain things. That's why it's over here on the right. And this is the associative mind. So you're actually getting creative and having that inspiration. When we move over here to Bina, this is the analytical mind. So this is when you plan the details of whatever you're going to do. So this is uh, inspiration. I want to build a house. This is, okay, I'm going to start thinking of how I'm going to build the house. When you move into Da'at, the, the decisive mind or knowledge, uh, this is where you create the blueprints, the plans, and you're actually making your mind up of what you're going to do. This aspect, chesed, is actually flow. So this is connected to the infinite flow of energy throughout the universe. Gebura now, on the other hand, is the limitation of flow. So this is the barriers or containers that contain all of the energies of these previous sephira. So this is the limitation of flow. This is where it's all held. Beauty is where all things exist. So the house exists, you building the house exists, you living in the house exists, everything in existence exists here within Tipereth. Then you have net sack. So this is the force. This is the perseverance or like you're attempting to relate to something or someone. Um... So this is actually you going out and the, the force of you going out to build the house or whatever. Um, hold is the, the focus that you would have. Or this is the, uh, another part of form. And this is your being guarded and withholding from the connection. So maybe this is, uh, you know, some, of the, some people had ideas to help you build the house and... And, you know, the ideas that they give really aren't aligning with yours. So, ho, this is where your left brain is is being guarded and saying, oh, nope, we're not going to do that. Yesod is the divine connection of these. So, 
hold is the the marriage of perseverance and focus or force and form and this is where they all are married and then of course you have Malkuth which is the recipient of all of the previous ones the kingdom or humanity and this is the product of your will and intent so this is the house after it's built and and this is the end product the product of your will and intent being married so you married your intention being the inspiration of what you wanted to do um and then your willpower down here um is connecting actually making you do build the actual house and then here is during the process of um connecting or disconnecting or the actual force or form of what you are going to do with building that house or whatever else you're doing it don't have to be building a house anything you're doing um but i think that's about it for the sephira um i'm going to come back and do a few videos breaking down the four worlds um, the tarot and Hebrew connections to this. Um, also, uh, I'm going to be speaking on Takun Olam, which is a, a part of the great work. Um, and a handful of other different things connected to Kabbalah. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and cut this video right here. This, that, this is a basic understanding of the tree, the structure of the tree of life. And... It's very important for you guys to memorize and understand this stuff if you're wanting to work with magic as a whole because pretty much all magic, um, especially in Western esoteric tradition, is a lot of it's derived from Kabbalistic um, teachings, Hermetic and Kabbalistic. But that's about it for this one. Uh, I love you all. I hope everyone has a wonderful day today. Uh, many blessings. Today's 11.10, so we're entering the gateway of 11.11. I hope you all are getting your meditation down and doing your spiritual work because this gateway is going to bring in many, uh, many great things for us. So I'm hoping that y'all are tapping into these energies. I love you all. I hope everyone has a wonderful day today. This is the Sephiroth of the Tree of Life. And I hope this helps you all get a greater understanding of it. One last thing I want to mention. Um, when it comes to chesed and geburah, I can't remember the words they use. It's, it's like metabolism and ketabolism or whatever. So when things are being digested or whatever, this is the compacting of it, bringing it together. So this would be like you chewing. And then this would be like your stomach digesting and dissolving. It's met metabolism and ketabolism, I believe. But that's about it for this video. I gotta quit rambling on. There's so much more about these Sephira that I'm actually gonna bring you guys a video for each individual Sephira. And we're gonna break down uh, what they are and what all they are connected to. If you're interested in studying Kabbalah, this is probably one of the best books you could get. The Mystical Kabbalah by Dion Fortune. It's an amazing book. A really amazing read. Um, but that would be my starting point. For you guys if you guys want to really understand uh the western esoteric tradition uh, and hermetic kabbalah and then this was another good one the essential kabbalah introduction by houston smith and daniel c Mant. and this is another good one the essential zohar the source of kabbalistic wisdom um each of those are really good but the mystical kabbalah is probably my favorite um i have a handful of other books out that i have a couple uh, a couple of my coven members borrowing um but i will do another video like breaking those down and stuff i'm really leaving this time love you guys peace